Number one then, the first question in paper two of the 2014 Higher Maths. Well, lines, intersection of lines, some of the end of it angles. But anyway, first of all, part A, obtain the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. So what's the line that bisects it at right angles? So I'm just putting that in roughly. It'll be a line something like this. Bisects it at right angles. Give that a little name there. Call that M, for instance. So the first thing would be then, <laughs> what are the coordinates of M? So M is the midpoint. Now, quite honestly, what's halfway between 3 and 5 and what's halfway between 0 and 2 is obviously 4, 1. You're probably going to write it all out, aren't you? 3 plus 5 upon 2 for the average of the x coordinates. 0 plus 2 upon 2 for the average of the y co coordinates. So that means the midpoint is 8 over 2 is 4, no surprise, and 2 over 2 is 1. You should probably note there that's the midpoint of AB that I've called M. Next thing would be what's the gradient of AB? Well, the gradient of AB will be the difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. They probably just leap straight in with the numbers. Well, there only are those two there. Normally I've put them side by side, but I'm not being confused here, especially if I've got a diagram. It's 2 take away 0 for the y coordinates, and it's 5 take away 3 for the x coordinates. That's 2 upon 2, so the gradient of AB is 1, which means that the perpendicular gradient will be the negative of the reciprocal, which is negative 1. I was distracted from completing the equal to sign by mentioning the word negative. There should be an equal to there. So the line I'm looking for, I'll use y minus b is mx minus a. y minus the y coordinate, which is 1, is the gradient, negative 1 times x minus the x coordinate, which is 4. Now that may well be all that's required, but I'm going to finish that off anyway. <laughs> Especially if I'm going to be using it later on in a substitution or something like that. Negative x plus 4 plus 1, so I've got y equals negative x plus 5. And I'll call that 1 because I know I'm going to use it later. Now for part b, it tells you the equation of the median from a is y plus 2x equals 6. I'll call that 2 because I know what's, what's coming next. Find t, the point of intersection of that median and that original line. So where's this median? If you had been working it out, it would have been from a to the midpoint of the opposite side. Which means that where they cross will be at this point here. That's the point t that they're looking for. Well, simultaneous equations then for that point of intersection. To find the point t, you could do elimination if you like, if you had that in the form of y plus x equals 5, you could use it with that. I'm just going to say substitute 1 in 2, so that I've got, instead of that y, I've got a negative x plus 5 plus the 2x equals 6. That was the substitution. And straight away, that just becomes x, and that 5 goes across and makes it 1, just to save right a line, minus 5. So x equals 1. And then what's y? Well, if I substitute x equals 1 in, that one's more appropriate, 1, I'll have y equals negative of 1 plus 5, so y equals 4. So t is the point 1, 4. Now, part C says, what's the angle that AT makes with the positive direction of the x-axis? So that's this angle in here, just to emphasise it more. Now, this must be something to do then with the connection between gradient and tangent of the angle. But I don't need to work out the gradient of the line AT. I'm not going to say A is the point 3, 0 and T is the point 1, 4 and blah, blah, get the gradient, because I know the equation of that line. This line has got equation y plus 2x equals 6. So, for part c, I know the gradient of at. The gradient of at is, well, let's have to take that across, negative 2. I'll just put it down here. y plus 2x equals 6. So y is negative 2x plus 6, which means the gradient is negative 2. 
And if the gradient is negative 2, that means the tangent of the angle, whatever you want to call it. I suppose you should really call it TAX. Angle TAX, tangent of the angle, is negative 2. So that angle, the angle TAX, will be the inverse tan of negative 2. So let's just get your calculator out and do inverse tan of negative 2. Shift tan, just putting the 2 in to get the acute angle, and that is 63.4 degrees. And then the cast diagram to sort out the sine of it, all sine tan cos. That means that it's either going to be here or here, but it's an angle less than 180, so it's in the second quadrant, so it'll be 180 minus 63.4 which is 116.6 degrees. There it is, question one.